former U.S. ambassador to Russia and the former deputy secretary general of NATO, Alexander Versbo. Uh, ambassador, thank you so much for being with us. Ambassador, I'm just standing in front of this map right now, which has got locations of at least 16 places, and I'm sure there are more by now, that have been targeted by the air from Russia and Ukraine. Blasts in this nation. What does the scale of this tell you this morning? Well, John, first of all, this is a very sad day for the people of Ukraine, and it's a very sad day for those who believe in, in, in a world order based on the rule of law rather than might makes right. Uh, clearly, the Russians are proceeding very methodically with this uh, aggression, uh, overnight taking out the air defenses, command and control communications, terrifying the population, as we're seeing now with the, the mass flight that's uh, unfolding from Kiev and other cities. Uh, clearly, uh, this is not just about Donbass, as uh, Putin announced in his speech uh, in, overnight. Uh, it looks like they're aiming to occupy at least the capital and, and several other major cities, and maybe try to occupy the whole country uh, with the view of uh, toppling the government and installing a pro-Russian regime. So uh, this is deserving of the, you know, the strong condemnation that we've heard from the United States, from NATO. And I think it's, it demands a very firm response. This is totally unprovoked, unjustified. Uh, the, ju the justification that this is to, to stop genocide and Nazi Nazis is just completely ludicrous. It's an insult to the victims of Nazi genocide during World War II and to the millions of Soviet citizens, including Ukrainians, who helped defeat the Nazis. Uh, so uh, it, it's a very terrible turn of events. Uh, and uh, now the international community has to make sure that Putin pays a very heavy price for what he's done. Again, just so people know what you're talking about, Putin is making the absurd claim it's all about this region over here. But yet you can see the blasts, the incursions all over the entire country here, which just proves the lie that he's been relying on for the last several days. So a violation of the world order like this, what do you do about it? If, if Vladimir Putin is willing to thumb his nose at generations of norms, how do you stop him now? Well, that's the challenge that uh, the free world now faces, and we have to uh, you know, be methodical ourselves, just as he's been methodical with his uh, aggression. Uh, I think we have to start by uh, rolling out all the remaining sanctions that have been considered, uh, these massive sanctions that uh, will once Ambassador, they're fully Ambassador, in place. I don't mean to cut you off, but our Frederick Plykin is in a key location over the border from Ukraine and Russia. Fred, tell us what you're seeing. Hi there, hi there, John. Yeah, those streaks that you're seeing up there in the sky, I don't know how they can see them. Exactly right now, you can see more artillery rockets apparently be firing from Russian territory towards the territory, I would say, around Harkin. I don't know if you can hear this right now. Just going to not talk for a second. So that's another salvo of what we believe is uh, multiple uh, artillery rocket launchers that have been going off here. Say the second or third salvo that we saw down here. I just want to explain really quick where I am actually, John, because uh, I'm at the last checkpoint uh, before the front line near Kharkiv. I'm on the Russian side. I'm south of the town of Belgorod. And what you see behind me over there, that's the sort of last checkpoint. And in that direction over there, that's where, uh, where Kharkiv would be, where we had Sam Kiley before. So what we've been seeing here over the past couple of minutes, over the past really 45 minutes since we've been here, there's more rockets that's being fired right now. If we look in the sky, we can see it there. Um, if we pan up, there's another salvo being fired right now. So you can see in this area, the Russians firing uh, are to move in heavy, heavy armor uh, through the road that I just pointed to before. We saw howitzers going down that road uh, just a couple of minutes ago as well. So this seems to be one of the main supply lots for the Russian military, for their offensive, at least for the Kharkiv region. This seems to be where the Russian military is sort of feeding that offensive from right here. In fact, if we pan over there, you can see there's another sort of troop transporter that's actually coming out of the area from the front line. So as, it, as you can see, there's that sort of movement that's going back and forth. And the folks who are manning that checkpoints, mostly uh, police officers, they're very nervous. And 
They stopped us from filming already a couple of times, especially when that heavy armor moves through. Uh, clearly not wanting to show the full extent of what is actually going in there, which is a lot of military hardware. And all of the vehicles that we've been seeing going in there, they all have that, that Z marking that the Russian military seems to have put on their vehicles for this offensive. So this is certainly a key location right here, south of Belgorod, really not very far at all uh, from, from the Ukrainian border, guys. All right, Fred, just bear with me for a second here. I want to show people where you are. Again, this is Belgorod. This is on the Russian side right here is the border, and this is Kharkiv. That's where our Sam Kylie was just moments ago. I'm going to take this off the screen so people can see it once again here. And Fred, just to be clear, you're hearing firing and seeing firing from the Russian side to the Ukrainian side right now. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, um, artillery rockets being launched from right here where I am, which is really, it's not, it's not far from the border at all. I'd say maybe about 10... 15 miles away from the border towards Ukrainian territory. So some of the impacts that our crews are hearing in places like Kharkiv is probably originating uh, from, from where we saw just there. They have those salvos of the artillery that are being fired, but then also you have the Russian ground operation clearly also being fed here uh, via this checkpoint uh, as a lot of that military hardware goes towards Ukraine uh, from this very place. And, you know, they've obviously shut down traffic for, for civilians uh, to that area. And on the roads, you do see a lot of vehicles, military vehicles, sort of going back and forth, uh, ferrying things. You see armored vehicles clearly um, uh, providing support for that massive Russian operation that is happening in Kharkiv and, of course, in other places as well uh, in, in Ukraine, John. And Fred, this is also very important here because what you're saying here is we've heard reports and seen the explosions, but you with your very own eyes at the border are seeing what is an actual incursion. You are seeing troops and material going from the Russian side to the Ukrainian side, yes? Yes, that's exactly what we're seeing. We're seeing um, those uh, uh, artillery pieces. We're seeing troop carriers going towards U Ukrainian uh, territory. I mean, obviously, we can't see all the way to the Ukrainian border from here, but there really isn't anything else between here and the Ukrainian border except the border checkpoint, and then the next town on the Ukrainian side is essentially Kharkiv. So that's, that, that is pretty much the only place they can go unless they set up a position somewhere before the border, but they're clearly massing in that direction. Mm -hmm. And on the other hand, what we've also seen is obviously that artillery fire, but I can tell you from having been here the entire night, we got here late last night, we, we were here when the Russian offensive started, and they've been launching a lot of heavy stuff here uh, from this area as well. We've heard what was clearly artillery fire. We've heard some pretty heavy rockets that were launched as well. And the other thing that you also um, uh, hear a lot here, John, is, is military warplanes uh, overhead, the um, jet fighters uh, going overhead that obviously are also heading in the direction of Ukraine as well. And Belgorod has been one of those sort of areas of troop concentrations for the Russians. Uh, it's one of the things that the U.S. has said is a lot of the concentrations that we've seen have been up here in Belgorod or down further south towards the Donetsk area. But this is where a lot of the Russian forces are and clearly also where a lot of their heavy uh, rockets, artillery, and also their heavy armor are as well, John. Again, the, the, the explosions have been going on for at least four hours now. Fred, I should say, if you need to, to protect yourself in any way, please let me know. But in the meantime, I will keep on asking you questions because this is so important what you are seeing. You are witnessing the aerial attack on Ukraine from Russia. You are witnessing the ground assault, the physical incursion over the border from Russia into Ukraine. There was some question, Fred, from our Sam Kiley, who is in Kharkiv right here, about whether or not there was outgoing fire at this point, return of fire from Ukraine into Russia. Have you had any sense of that? Yeah, there's been, I mean, from what from what we've seen, and we've been um, in Bel Belgorod and sort of going south of Belgorod as well, there's been absolutely no return fire that we would have seen or would have witnessed. That, that doesn't appear to us as though any sort of incoming fire uh, was going on. All of the thuds uh, that we were hearing, all the launches that we were hearing, to us appeared very much to be coming from, uh, from Russian territory. Also last night, uh, when the offensive started, you could, um, from our vantage point, you could, you could see the flashes uh, from the rockets taking off. You could see also uh, some of the flashes from, from the artillery being fired. So it certainly seems to us as though what we are seeing here is, is outgoing fire and, and really nothing in the way of incoming fire. And also, if you look at the posture here, I mean, if you look around, you can see that 
The folks who are standing at that checkpoint, they're pretty calm. They don't look like they need to be taking cover anytime soon. There's no shelters. There's cars around. There's civilians around. No one is trying to sort of direct those civilians to go and take shelter or anything. It certainly doesn't seem as though the folks on this side of the border are very nervous about sort of incoming fire that could happen here. What's going on here is that the Russian military is firing in that direction, which is Ukraine. And they're certainly doing so from many, many positions here along the border. It's not just here where I am, but it's also in places around the border as well, uh, where, you know, we've, we've been hearing those that outgoing fire going on at varying distances also. So there must be other positions as well in other places along the border that are also firing towards Ukraine, John.